Today we are going to discuss non-harmonic tones. These are notes which do not belong to chords, rather they serve to embellish the chords. Usually they resolve back onto a given chord. We are going to look at the various types of non-harmonic tones. The first one is referred to as a passing note. This is a note which, as we mentioned, is not part of a chord, and it passes from a note which does belong to a chord to another note which does belong to a chord, but this note is the passing note. It lies between these two notes. Let's look at an example of a passing note. The passing note is used to fill in the space between two other notes. These two other notes may belong to the same or different chords. Passing notes can either be accented or unaccented. Let's, let's look at an example of a passing note. We start out with a chord, and we move to another chord, and in between lies a passing note, which does not form part of the chord. Say we have a C in the soprano, moving to an E, these are part of the C major chord, and the D in between does not form part of these chords, it is a passing note. This particular example is an unaccented passing note because the non-chordal note, the D, falls on the weak second beat of the bar. Now let's look at an example of an accented passing note. Let's say that the first chord is a C major chord and we move to another C major chord but this time we're going to place the non harmonic notes on the strong downbeat of the bar. So as you can see, there is a G which occupies the, the f first four beats of the first bar in the soprano. Then, on the downbeat of the next bar, which is the strong part of the beat, there is the non-harmonic note, the F which forms a dissonant interval with the bass of a, a dissonant perfect fourth, which must resolve. It resolves downwards onto an E, which is then once again part of the chord, the C major chord. So this is an example of an accented passing note. We move in the soprano from the G to the E via the F. So. Now we're going to look at the, the neighbor note. This is a non-harmonic note which lies above or below the, the harmonic notes in question. So we start out with a harmonic note. If it is an upper neighbor note, then it will be above the harmonic notes. So let's say we start with the C in the soprano. We then introduce a non-harmonic note, a D, and then it goes back to the harmonic note, the C. If it is a lower neighbor note, the non-harmonic tone will lie below the two harmonic tones. Now let us consider the suspension. The suspension differs from the passing note and the neighbor note in the sense that the dissonant interval is prepared by a common tone. We saw that with the passing note, the dissonant passing note is prepared by a note which is either above or below the 
the non harmonic tone and with the the neighbor note likewise the note which is dissonant is prepared by a neighboring note with the suspension we prepare the dissonant non harmonic tone with a common tone that's the only difference it all depends on what precedes the non harmonic tone so with the suspension we prolong a given tone which was consonant so that it becomes dissonant in the next chord and then resolves downward by step. There were thus three steps in the actualization of a suspension. There is the preparation which prepares the suspension which then resolves. The preparation, the suspension, the resolution. Let us say that we have the following. We have an F major chord But when we move, for instance, to a C major chord, that F in the, in the soprano does not immediately become an E to form part of the C major chord. We prolong that F into the next chord. All the other notes go into C major, but the F is prolonged. It is suspended, hence the word suspension, to form a dissonant interval with the bass voice. it resolves downward by step. It must resolve downwards and cannot resolve upwards. This goes back of course to fourth species counterpoint where there is a discussion regarding why uh, suspensions can't resolve upwards and ultimately the reason given is that the great masters of, of counterpoint were not accustomed to do so so for that reason we honor their conventions. So here is the preparation which is a common tone Suspend that F and resolve it downwards by step to an E. Now there are also designated numbers to describe a suspension. That was a 4-3 suspension because the F forms the interval of a fourth with the bass voice and then it resolves down to a third. We'll also see there is the 7-6 suspension but this is the 4-3 suspension. Sometimes the note of resolution forms the preparation for the next suspension and this process continues in what is known as the chain of suspensions. There's our suspension, it resolves down by step. That consonant resolution becomes the preparation suspension in the chain of suspensions that's our chain of suspensions on your screen you can see an example of a chain of suspensions four three suspensions followed by two one suspensions suspended note instead of tying it so you can hear the suspension more clearly. Let's move on to the retardation. The retardation is essentially the same thing as a suspension. The only difference is that the suspension resolves upwards instead of downwards. Uh, and on your screen you can see an example from Mozart. His piano sonata in C major, Kirchhoff 542, the second movement. And there are there is an example of a 9-8 suspension in the soprano and a 4-3 suspension 
in the tenor voice. And there is also a retardation in the alto voice. So the F sharp in the alto, which is suspended from the third crotchet beat of the second last bar, is it becomes a retardation on the downbeat of the final bar and it resolves upwards, so it's a retardation, not a suspension. Now we're going to look at the appoggiatura. The appoggiatura differs from the preceding non-harmonic tones in the sense that it involves a leap. We're going to look at the appoggiatura and the échappé, also known as the escape note. There is a subtle difference between the appoggiatura and the échappé. The appoggiatura is approached by leap and resolves by step, whereas the échappé is approached by step and resolves by leap. Let's look at an example of an appoggiatura for Mozart's piano sonata number no. one in C major. Kirchhoff 279, the first movement. So there, on the third crotchet beat of the second bar, we have approached that C sharp, which is clearly a non-harmonic tone. We have approached it by a leap downwards of a third from the preceding E in the soprano and we have resolved it upwards to a D on the final crotchet beat of that bar. So in a sense, it's actually, that's an inverted appoggiatura, if you will, but it's an appoggiatura. So, usually appoggiaturas go the other direction. They actually are, one leaps upwards towards the non-harmonic tone and then resolves it downwards. But this is also an appoggiatura. Now we're going to look at the échappé, the escape note. As mentioned, this is the opposite of the appoggiatura. The note is approached by step, but it is resolved by leap. Hence, it escapes from the non-harmonic tone. It is an escape note referred to by the French term échappé. Let's look at an example of an échappé from Haydn's Sonata in C major, HOB 16. 35, the third movement. As you can see, the dissonant F, which forms part of the second crotchet beat of the first bar in the soprano, there is a semiquaver F. That is a dissonant non-harmonic tone. It's an échappé in the sense that it is approached or prepared by the preceding E, so it is approached by step, but it resolves to the harmonic tone, the D, on the final crotchet beat of the first bar. It is approached, it resolves rather, by leap. There is a downward leap from the F to the D. So the échappé is prepared by step and resolved by leap. There's our dissonant échappé and it resolves by leap onto the D on the third crotchet beat in the soprano of bar one. We see the same pattern again in the fifth bar of this example. to look at the anticipation. Sometimes the note of harmonic resolution is anticipated before its time in the preceding chord, thus forming a dissonant interval with the preceding chord, and it anticipates a harmonic 
tone in the, the following chord. To see that more clearly, let's look at the example of the screen from Bach. BWV 280, Christ unser Herr zum Jordan kam. On the fourth quaver beat of bar two in the soprano is the note C which clashes with the underlying G major chord. It is thus a non-harmonic tone. It anticipates the forthcoming C minor chord, and then it resolves as part of that C minor chord. It is an anticipation. Finally, let's look at the pedal point. This occurs quite commonly in organ music, when the organist puts down one of the pedals, it's usually a tonic note or a dominant note, referred to as a tonic or dominant pedal. This note often forms clashes with many of the notes, but ultimately it resolves with this note in mind, this note thus serving as a tonic note. Or If we look at the example from BWV 847, which is of course the second fugue from the Welton Clavier Book 2, the 1 in C minor. Right at the end, there is this pedal point. Let's look at the example on your screen. As you can see, that C right at the end, which starts on the third crutchet beat of the third last bar in the tenor and bass voices, is prolonged right to the end. So it clashes with many of the notes in the upper voices, but ultimately those notes form consonances with it at the end, when it reaches the tonic. This is a tonic pedal point. Mm -hmm. 